Welcome ladies and gentlemen. Before we get into the meat of this video, there's a couple things that I'd like to get out of the way very quickly. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Atheism Defended, Raul, or whatever fucking sock account he's using today, um, did do a video response. I put a link to that video response in the video entitled Atheism Defendant's Final Fail. Um, so you can go and check it out. He also left some comments down there with a link to it, you know, um, and you can go and read those and just, you know, he's a turd and I'm done. You're a fucking turd. Fuck you. Fuck off. Go away. Um, but for the rest of you now, I'm not going to refer to you guys as my subscribers or my viewers. I'm going to refer to you as my friends. And this is because I've gotten a lot of support and a lot of really good advice. And I want to, I want to thank, thank each and every one of you. I ha would wish I could, you know, shake hands with each and every one of you and say thank you for taking the time to watch my videos and leave a comment. Even if you're critical of me, even if you insult me, you know, my, some of my closest friends are the most critical of me insult me the most because that's how the real world is that's what good friends do is you know they poke fun at you and they know you well enough to, to make a joke out of you know some of your personal flaws right so thank you my friends I appreciate each and every one of you and it's really it's inspired me so now we get to move on to the meat of this video. So to begin, for those of you who don't know, I am an electrician. And I have been an electrician since uh, I think 17 or 18. I, it's kind of foggy, you know, I've, I've lived, I've done a lot of partying. So um, Jeff, if you're watching and you remember what year it was um, that we started as electrician helpers, you know, remind me in the comments section. Um, but yeah, since I was like 17 or 18, I've been an electrician. I am now 44 years old. Now, I haven't been doing electrical work the entire time because I did a lot of fucking off and I did a lot of other things, you know. Um, I've done telecommunications. I've done alarm installation. I've done um, a closed circuit um, TV, security systems, um, just about anything with wires I've done. And the job I have now, I work at an amusement park, and I work with, um, with rides, okay? So I'm an electrician at heart. I love troubleshooting. I love solving problems, and that's my passion, you know, other than music, okay? So now that you know, that will explain why I want to give you some information about an experiment. Now, there's going to be a link in the description to this article. Um, I don't recall how old this article is. I just know that it's fucking cool. Um, and I want to cite my sources because I don't want to be like fucking Jacqueline Glenn and not cite sources and then get spanked by Agent of Doubt because that fucking hurts. Trust me. Being spanked by Agent of Doubt fucking hurts and if anybody here is ever spanked by him what you need to do is you need to get a hold of Brian J and have him send you some special cream for your butt hurt and it works I know that because I've had to do that twice now anyway this article is called the 13 mile space tether tryout now a lot of you may have seen a lot of the UFO footage footage or conspiracy theory um, about this whole thing. Now let me explain to you what they were doing, okay? The experiment called the Tethered Satellite System, and yes, I'm reading the article, I didn't write this myself, okay, Michael, was a joint effort between NASA and the Italian Space Agency. And, you know, the idea was to show that the Tethered Satellites uh, could generate electric current as they cruise through Earth's magnetic field. 
During STS-46, the tether unspooled just 840 feet, which is about 256 meters um, from Atlantis before the wheel jammed. Okay, so that experiment didn't go too well. And then four years later, they got 12.2 miles, or 17.7 kilometers of cable release before the 0.1 inch or 0.25 centimeter tether snap, sending the probe shooting away into higher orbit. Now, look, I'm no rocket scientist. I'm not an engineer. But don't you think you should have used a larger diameter fucking cable? Come on, people. Come, think it through. I mean, I know it costs a lot of money to send stuff up because of the weight, you know, payload weight and how much fuel and all. I, I get that. But come on. Anyway, though neither attempt was 100% successful, the TSS belongs on this list. Now, this list is on um, uh, the space.com, you know, six coolest uh, experiments in space. And by no means am I saying this is the coolest experiment because there are a lot of really other fucking cool experiments that are doing in space. I will cover some of those as well. But this one interests me because I'm an electrician. Okay? And the reason it's on this list is because of its um, scale and the ambition of this. And the 1996 experiment did return some interesting results. Now, the 1996 experiment is where we see that footage um, of the so-called UFOs and stuff. Okay. So, the results before the tether snap, the TSS had been generating 3,500 volts and up to about 0.5 amps of current, according to NASA officials. Okay. Now, as far as the whole alien conspiracy thing, I could see why they would be interested. If indeed there are, there were UFOs up there or alien craft up there checking out what we're doing, they're probably like, hey, these guys are trying to figure, oh, they fucked up. Those fucking dumbass humans. Use a bigger cable. You know, why didn't they just send us a text? <laughs> Say, guys, use a bigger fucking cable. <laughs> anyway, um... But what this means is that it worked. I mean, it wasn't 100% successful, like I said, you know, but it worked. It, the science showed that we can put probes in space and we can generate electricity simply by passing these satellites through Earth's magnetic field. I believe this is huge news. I believe that this could change the world. Now, this boils down to, now can we generate enough electricity, you know, to be significant? I don't know that. Or maybe this is more so designed to help us for space flight, for spacecraft, being able to generate electricity using the magnetic field of not only our planet, but possibly other planets and other planetary bodies instead of relying on solar sails you know a lot or not solar sails but solar panels a lot of the satellites we have now have these giant solar arrays that you know as they get farther from the sun you know obviously they collect smaller and smaller amounts of electricity and I know that there's the nuclear option but if we can use the magnetic field of another planetary body to generate electricity. This would advance our technology as a spacefaring species, which I believe is the future of mankind. I believe we are supposed to be the shepherds of this planet. And the use of fossil fuels um, and greed um, is out of control. But the good news is we're going to run out of fossil fuels. The bad news is, if and when we run out of these fossil fuels, will we have pushed um, the balance overboard in regards to, you know, uh, global climate change by using these fossil fuels? That, that's the question, and that's my worry. I, I think we really need to start pushing towards, you know, electrical power, generating electricity without the use of fossil fuels, and stop polluting the air, 
and trying to at least get this global climate change under control. Now, I know I believe climate change is a natural phenomenon on this planet. Um, the, the simple fact that we've had ice ages after ice ages after ice ages shows that the planet goes through warming periods and cooling periods, okay? And there's no doubt in my mind that we are accelerating this process by changing the atmosphere with the use of these fossil fuels. So, this discovery or this scientific experiment, I believe, is significant. And I really, I'm hoping people um, will wake up to this idea of, hey, you know, how do we generate electricity? What are new ways of generating electricity? Then as a final note, to you flat earthers out there, um, explain this shit, okay? Explain how a flat earth can generate a magnetic field. Lord Stephen Christ, if you're watching, you motherfucker, explain in your model how this magnetic field is created. And instead of drawing some pretty fucking stupid diagram, you know, with your awesome graphic art skills, because your graphic art skills are pretty fucking cool, you know, it, it, use math, okay? Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you on the next one. If you want to be a part of the Inventor Gorilla Show, let me know. That show is coming back. Cheers.